What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, I want to show you why you should be very careful when using the functions eval or exec in Python. So let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to talk about exec and eval in today's video and why you should be very careful when using these two functions, especially if you're hosting an application and users are using your application and they're providing input to your application and that input in some way influences the input to eval or exec. This is a very dangerous thing and you should be very careful with that. I'm going to show you why in today's video and I'm going to limit myself in this video to a simple Python file. So I'm going to show you the examples in the Python file. I'm well aware that none of you guys would ever do that in a simple Python file, but that's also not really where the problem is. If you use exec and eval in your own automation scripts, that's not the issue. The issue is if you have a web application, for example, a Flask web app, a Django web app that you're putting public and that is running on a server and then you provide people with input possibilities and these inputs then influence exec or eval, that is a very dangerous thing. But first of all, let us talk about what exec and eval are in general. They're basically just functions that take a string as an input uh, and this string is a Python statement, this string is some code and this is then executed or evaluated. Essentially executed and evaluated are the same thing, but eval also returns you uh, the output. So for example, if I say print eval, in fact, we use that in the calculator tutorial on my channel, we use the eval, uh, eval statement to get uh, the string that was crafted and to evaluate it to return the result. But essentially, we can say eval and then, um, for example, two plus five, this is a string. Now, Python will then take this, this is obviously Python code two plus five is something that Python uh, can interpret and it results in seven. If we evaluate this, Python executes the statement and uh, we receive the result uh, as a result of eval. We then print the result. That's how it happens. And then we also have exec and exec is essentially the same thing, but it doesn't return the result. So in this case, two plus five is executed, but we don't get the result here as return value. That's um, those are the basics. So what can go wrong with that uh, with those two functions. Now, let's say here in this very trivial and arbitrary scenario, I have some key in my program, I say this is my secret password, this is my constant that I have in my code, and this will be the string you will never know this looks like a CTF flag now. Uh, and in CTFs, you will oftentimes find eval and exec. This is also a nice thing to learn here. Um, if you are going to do CTFs, but essentially, this is now my secret password in my code. And then let's say I provide the user with the possibility to do something, I don't know, to create his own variables that you can uh, that he can then use later on. So I can say, Okay, user, please give me a variable name. Please enter a variable name. So I want to allow the user to uh, create variables and to uh, change the value of the variables and all that. So first, I want to have a var name, and then I want to have a var value. So please enter a value for the variable. Again, I have to repeat it one more time. This is not uh, the actual issue here. The issue is not that you have some command, uh, some command line script, where you shouldn't use exec. This is just a very, very simple example of what could happen. This can also happen in an uh, in a web app scenario where you have text boxes and buttons. But let's say this is what we want to do now. And then what I allow the user to do is I allow the user to execute that. So I say exec, and my Python string is var name is equal to var val. So this is something that I can do here, I can uh, not var val like this var val like this. And this results in the Python statement, if I enter here, uh, for example, XYZ, and then here I enter 200, it will say XYZ equals 200, it will create a variable. And then I can say, for example, in the end, uh, the value of your variable is now, and then I can say here, eval, um, eval, and then let me just make this an F string eval, and then the variable name that we have here. So that is the idea. So we can see that this works. If I now run this here, I can say, okay, XYZ is my variable, 200 is my value, the val value of your variable is now 200. No problem here. Um, I think 
all of you guys probably know already what the problem is. If I go ahead now and I say, for example, uh, that my variable name is my secret password and my value is also my secret password. You can see the value of your variable is now you will never know because the value of my variable actually is um, is now evaluating the name my secret pass password. If I evaluate my secret password, uh, this is what happens, right? I, I get this as a result here. I, I print a value of my secret password. This is something that I can do. Now you might say, okay, but maybe if I have a flask application and I have a secret key, I don't know the name of it. So I cannot even uh, place the name here. I cannot even know what to do. Uh, but that's not true because, uh, or actually it might be true, but what you can do nevertheless is you can write Python code and do virtually whatever you want. So for example, let me show you a very simple input here. I can say, okay, what I want to do is, um, come on, run this. Uh, what I want to do is I want to create a variable X and the value of the variable X should be open and uh, it should be uh, my new file dot txt and it should be opened in writing mode and I want to write gotcha. Gotcha. Like this. Guess what happens? New file was created. Gotcha. And this is now harmless, but I can also write executables. I can delete files. I can traverse the directory. You can see the value of the variable is now six because that is what uh, was returned by the function but I can execute Python code now. And what I can also do is if I have this secret file here, the secret txt file with another secret in it, uh, I can also go ahead and do the same thing. I can say X, but now I can say open. And if I know a file exists, uh, exists secret.txt, maybe I scanned the directory before that. I wanna open it in reading mode and I wanna read the content. The value of your variable is now another secret. So this is a very dangerous thing to do. Again, as I mentioned it a couple of times already, this will not happen in simple command line application. But maybe let's say a very trivial example is you have a flask application, and you let the user input some calculations and you evaluate the calculations for the user. The problem is, if you do that, um, you allow the user to essentially if you use an eval function for that, you allow the user to essentially execute Python code on your machines. Now, maybe you think you're smart now and you can just say, okay, I, I just take the last three characters of the user, uh, user input, or I take a special uh, portion of it, or I use a regex or something. It might work, but in general, whenever the user can in, uh, influence what happens in exec and eval, this is dangerous because we can add uh, in Python, maybe not semicolons, but we can add special characters, we can add line breaks, we can add colons, we can do a lot of things here uh, that will mess up your security mechanism. So in general, my advice is avoid X second eval whenever possible, especially when other users are involved. If you're just writing your own automation script, it doesn't really matter, you can do whatever you want. But if other people are working on your machine because they're using your web app, which is running on your server, don't allow them to use exec or eval in any case, in any way, because if they can control what enters these functions, they can basically execute Python on your computer and that is dangerous. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching, see you in the next video, and...